Greetings everyone, John here with a 4K Let's Play. This time I am flying solo as I attempt to actually play the game and talk at the same time, which is not something I normally do on here, but I thought it would be interesting to showcase the game running in its high resolution movie mode while talking about some of the cool graphical effects on display. Now Neo is not a cutting edge game necessarily, but it is a very attractive looking game, I still think, and when running in the action mode you get the nice stable 60 frames per second. In movie mode though, we see something different. The game employs a 30 frames per second cap instead in order to, you know, boost the image quality. And what we're really seeing here is kind of a mix between, well, the game uses an adaptive resolution, as I've said before, where it's sort of bouncing between a full 4K or 2160p and I guess 1440p and 1800p in between there. So it kind of bases itself on load, but unfortunately there's there's still some issues here I found. There's kind of an inherent judder in the image. It's not really frame pacing issues per se, but it does actually behave in a similar similar way. It's sort of like uh, if you think about the camera moving there, it moves maybe say like two centimeters one frame and then four the next kind of thing. There's like a, a jumpiness to the motion that happens and it definitely kind of hurts fluidity and it's something you don't see in the 60 frames per second mode. So let me go on over here and take out these guys real quick. And you can see that there's some nice particles and such happening. It looks, yeah, like when you, uh, let's see here, like the key pulse indicator that happens around him for instance. If you see, watch for the blue particles there. Looks pretty nice, I think. But I think the real star of the show, and the reason I started with this level, is the rain, of course. As you can see there, even with the little uh, item there, but also around the torches and stuff, they sort of employ a screen space technique on the raindrops here, so that as they pass in front of a light source, you actually see a nice glow effect, which looks really cool, I think. You can see the lighting play off of his armor and his character model. And of course, there's the rain effects everywhere. There's some nice shader work going on here. It really has, you know, I know a lot of older games went for this everything's wet look, but it actually really works here. I mean, the texture detail here is pretty nice, actually. The way the moon and the lighting sort of reflects off the water puddles there. And of course, as you can see, all of the tiles and everything here in this scene are actually model geometry. They do that a lot in this game, actually, rather than using, you know, just a flat texture with some bump maps or parallax occlusion maps, you really actually get legitimate depth in it, which, you know, it's kind of a technique I suppose we saw in From Software's games on PS4 and Xbox One and PC and all that. But unfortunately, there is one sort of uh, downside I found visually, it's the water here. If I come around on the bridge, you actually get a nice highlight from the moon there that looks actually not too bad. But the water in general is kind of flat looking, I feel. A little bit bland. Definitely the weakest part of the game visually. This tree doesn't look too bad, actually. And you actually see the the pine needles, the branches kind of swaying very gently in the breeze. Can't carry any more of that, though. But let's run back down here and look around some more. You can see, again, everything's really nicely modeled here. It just has a very uh, solid look to it. Even this little that. That looks pretty good. Now it's actually a little bit challenging to play the game here because when I'm feeding through all of the capture hardware there is actually some additional input lag. Plus I'm actually used to playing it at 60 frames per second. And of course going, going for 30 is a little bit, uh, you know, it's definitely a downgrade. And of course we got this guy over here throwing firebombs at us while we're attempting to fight him. Because why not? Take him out. So, come around the house here. I think there's a yeah, there's a guy here. Take him out real quick. So yeah, let's knock this tree down real quick. And I'm gonna jump in the water here and you can kinda get a better look at what I was talking about. Again, there's a nice specular work there. But the water actually sort of lacks any real reflection, screen space or otherwise. It's just kind of uh, flat. It's a little bit of distortion below the waves, I guess. It doesn't look too bad. But there's no uh, 
the splashing effect there, it's just a bunch of particles it looks like generated and some little splash textures on the water surface. Again, it's, it's I yeah, it's really nitpicking the visuals here for sure. But there is a surprising amount of water in this game because you're kind of often fighting on the coast or you know, in areas like this. But it's not bad. So I do I do kind of feel like watching him run around there's like shades of Ninja Gaiden here as well as in the engine of course. There's just like a, a something to his stride that really reminds me of playing that game. And of course it feels like a continuation of that technology in some ways. With the adaptive resolution scaling that we saw in I guess maybe that first appeared in Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2 on the PlayStation 3. And then of course Ninja Gaiden 3, disappointing as it may have been, also used similar techniques to hit 60 frames per second. But of course, having a 30 frames per second mode is kind of a new thing here. So let's work on taking some of these guys out here. How about this? I'll use, the, I'll use this technique here, sort of the living weapon so you can see some of the particles in action. Just kind of like hammers right through it though. A nice looking effect I think. Again, the game isn't necessarily pushing technology boundaries or anything, but it does. It has a nice solid look to it that I really like. Take him out. Now let's see, we're supposed to go through here, I believe in... yeah. So this should actually be sort of a battle. Yeah, okay. So this is a nice, pretty nice looking battle. Nice. Well, that's terrible. You can see, you notice when I pass in front of scenery, like the trees and stuff, they actually use sort of a dither effect rather than like a traditional alpha to make that work. Oh, wow. Okay. I got destroyed there. That's what happens when you're trying to talk and play at the same time, but this highlights the very quick loading times. But I think that kind of gives you an idea of this level. So why don't we jump over to a different stage and actually see what else we got here. So this time we're going to jump into a different map, also set at night. And this time we're kind of on the seaside here in a ruined temple yard. You can see there's a little bit of loading here while we wait for it to start up. But most of the, the loading that actually happens in game is even faster than that, as you just saw. Not a big deal, I think. So once we actually get in here, actually, the first thing that stands out to me is... BAM! Look at these clouds. To me, that recalls, like, straight up, like, the 90s, for me at least. Old PC games, like, I'm thinking Quake clouds here, even the original Unreal. They're kind of moving ridiculously fast, and there's multiple layers to it. It really kind of takes me back. I do like that effect. Of course, you don't actually see it. It doesn't look like it's warping so much along the edges, but a little bit. It's kind of interesting looking, the way it hits the horizon there. But this is another nice looking map here. Set at night, as I said before. Oh, you get some nice uh, screen space light shafts there from the moon that look kind of nice. Sort of a bloom effect. That kind of, actually the look here kind of reminds me of an older Xbox game, Otogi. If you've ever played that. It was also <clears throat> from From Software, and it was quite a beautiful looking game for the system. I might have to look at that sometime. So one of the benefits of running in movie mode is actually improved shadow map quality. If you look out here at the at the wall there, it's not great, but when you switch over to the action mode, the distance from which the detail is lost is pretty serious. So. From this perspective then, the shadow maps would appear basically half resolution of that. So we have another geometrically dense environment here. Quite beautiful. There is these spider webs and stuff though do sort of produce a lot of aliasing, even at this higher resolution. But it overall looks pretty nice. The water again, not bad, but kind of a weak point. Primarily, you know, the, the way the shaders look there, a little bit odd, and there's no reflections, of course.
but it does kind of, it really has a nice look to it, I think. Good atmosphere. Yeah, you can really see when you look over here at the, uh, the light from the moon. That actually looks pretty nice. It's a bit intense, maybe, but it's kind of a neat effect. I'm just kind of pushing through here so we can see other bits of the level. Now, this level, of course, is tricky because, well, you can pretty much fall off at any point into the water, and that is equal to death. And you can see here that the AI is pretty relentless, actually, so he's just going to keep following me wherever until he gets what he wants. There's actually... Uh, look at that. That is awesome. I love that. If, that When you kill an enemy near the edge of something, you get that really nice... Um, he kind of falls off balance and like tumbles in. Looks really cool, I think. That impacts you as well, by the way. If you're near an edge and an enemy hits you. Like in one level, there's like bats that come flying out of a cave. And if you're near the edge, they'll actually basically bump into you and cause you to lose balance and tumble off the side, which does actually cause death. So we took him out. Open these doors. Yeah, you can see a lot of specul specular shimmering here. In-surface aliasing. The, the anti-aliasing techniques used in this game, not especially amazing. But I do really like the texture work here. So there's a really nice look to the wood there. Kind of got that shiny wet thing going on, of course. But it sort of reminds me... Wow. Yeah, that looks pretty good. This actually, this kind of looks like a ruined version of a, a fighting game stage from, like, the Dead or Alive series in a way, you know. Of course, I mean, you know, it's based on... <laughs> real architecture, but still. Team Ninja knows a lot about that. Some physics there, but you see things immediately disappear when you destroy boxes, which kind of makes sense. So yeah, I think that's kind of, that's about all I have to say on this one for the moment. Just sort of an experiment, just to see if you guys like some live chat in regards to basically looking at games and nitpicking them in real time. This is actually a game I've continued to play after the initial coverage because, man, it's really good. They did an amazing job with this. It is pretty challenging, especially when you're trying to talk and play at the same time. And when I normally play, of course, I stick to the 60 frames per second mode. So, jumping over here to the 30 frames per second mode, it actually, I mean, it remains fully playable, of course, but it definitely feels like a step back. But anyways, if you'd like to see more actual let's plays like this in the future do let me know because they're kind of fun to do but if you did enjoy watching me fumble around here and talk about the game in real time well be sure to like the video subscribe to our channel and follow me on twitter and until next time this is john signing off